What's up, fam? Okay. Um, I don't know how much comedy you guys see. A lot of comedians, they'll start their sets with some self-depreciating or deprecating humour, often about their appearance. I've been trying to do something different. I've been trying to start with some self-appreciating humour. So here goes. I know a lot of you are looking at me. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I look like a cross between a nice man and a cutie pie. <laughs> Just some self-appreciating humour <laughs> to start off the set. I, uh, I don't have big dick energy. Many apologies. But I do get bad diarrhoea easily. So. <laughs> So that's still pretty cool. I was recently actually uh, diagnosed with diarrhea and uh, I'm not sure what was worse, calling my last three sexual partners to tell them the news or when my doctor informed me that was unnecessary. <laughs> it's not all bad news though. I recently agreed with my ex-girlfriend that if we're both single when we're 35 years old, she'll pay me back the $2,000 she owes me. <laughs> So that's pretty good. I didn't like COVID lockdown. One of my least favourite things about COVID lockdown was uh, the time where you could only uh, socialise by means of video conferencing software like Zoom. And uh, to spice things up during that period, I, I had a bit of a gag that I was doing during that period to my friends. Uh, so when I was talking on the Zoom, I'd gesticulate more than usual. And then out of nowhere, I'd just freeze like that. And then they'd be like, oh, Tom, there's been a technical error. And then I'd hold it. But then after a few seconds, I'd go, hey. <laughs> Look, it sounds shit now. Back then, that was top tier. That was some of the funniest shit people had seen in years or months, probably. Like, ah! Some of them were falling off the couch. They loved it. At least the first few times I did it. Maybe the fifth time I did it, and certainly the last time I did it, I was talking to two female friends on Zoom. I was talking, I was gesticulating, and then out of nowhere, I went like that. And then they were like, oh, Tom, there's been a technical error. But I held it for a few more seconds. The longer you hold, the bigger the laugh. So I held it for a few more seconds, but then they just went back to talking to each other. And then one of them started talking about how she currently has a UTI. And I was like, oh no, that sounds private. But then I was wondering, would she have told me about the UTI? I don't think she's talked about something like that with me before. I've heard other people talk about UTIs. I've never heard about her talk about something like that. But then I'd left it too long. And now I'm halfway through the story about the UTI. I can't reveal now. Because now it's like I did this so I could hear about the UTI. So now I'm like, I just need to get out of this conversation. But then I realize I can't even move my eyes. Like, it's one thing if I reveal. It's another, another if they just see. Like, that's way worse. So I need to maintain eye contact with the camera, use my peripheral vision to see when they're not looking at their cameras and then get out of it at that point. So I waited about like 45 seconds, picked an appropriate point and then just out of nowhere and went boom, right? And just shut the laptop very quickly. I don't think they saw. I texted them saying there's been a technical error. I did not admit the gag. Never admit the gag. I opened the laptop back up. I clicked the link. I logged back in and then she told me about her UTI. <laughs> So this is a graph about the purpose of that story. Thank you. As you can see, it's a joke. It's also a way of mentioning I have two female friends. It's pretty good. Uh, so this is a graph of 2020, as you can see. Uh, this is how much I've heard the term flatten the curve. As you can see, it correlates exactly with the actual curve. Uh, this is COVID in Australia over the course of 2020. And this is how horny I was. Absolutely no correlation at all there. <laughs> Not even one little bit. Uh, this is most people who say lockdown made them awkward and their social aptitude over time. As you can see, they've had very low social aptitude for at least four years, and that's when they started saying, I'm so socially awkward <laughs> now. Very suspicious. Uh, so this is a graph of how rude it is to hold up each finger by itself. As you can see, the middle finger, by far the most rude. Now, this is my excitement seeing you topless as it relates to how many nipples you have. As you can see, there's a peak there at two. That's because of horniness. The second more dramatic peak, that's curiosity. That's, you got three nipples, fuck off. You got nine, give me a look. I need to see that. 
Uh, this is uh, some data from last year. I stopped recording in September because, as you can see, there's not much going on. But to be fair to me, something going on there in March. Uh, this is a graph of how many times a girl blew me a kiss last year. As you can see, 0.5 there in March. That's because she says it was a yawn, but I know what I saw. <laughs> there are two of us, we disagreed, so it's 0.5. That's the appropriate place for it to be. Um, this is some data from a few years ago. I went on a date with a girl called Sandra, and this is her enjoyment out of 10 of different aspects of the date. So I got eight out of 10 for the venue, which I chose. I got seven out of 10 for the rapport over the course of the date. Also got seven for my clothes, which I also chose. I got 9 out of 10 for my enthusiasm, uh, but as you can see, only got 1 out of 10 for the post-date survey. <laughs> Sandra did not enjoy the post-date survey. Um, this is a bit of a beef I have with the, uh, the definition of the Mile High Club. I've met a few people in my life who say they're a member of the Mile High Club. I don't agree about the common definition. Most people would say that the definition is sex on a plane, right? But that can't be enough because it's got to be a mile high. It's the Mile High Club after all. So then I think to the formula of what it takes to get into the Mile High Club, you'd add like a plus 2,000 metres. So I think it should be like sex plus 2,000 metres. But even then, 2,000 metres from what, right? Because plus is unidirectional. And the formula needs to be multidirectional. It needs to account for the 360 degrees, no matter where it happens, in the globe, you still get into the Mile High Club, right? So then I think the formula should be plus or minus sex and 2,000 metres from sea level. So if that's sea level, then it's either plus 2,000 metres from sea level plus having sex or minus 2,000 metres from sea level minus having sex. But what is minus sex? It's a good question, right? So sex is sex, obviously. Um, sex minus sex, that's just zero, that's just nothing, forget about that. Uh, minus sex, I would say, is the opposite of sex. And I would define sex as being about two or more people coming together. So I think the opposite of that would be pleasuring yourself. So therefore, I think the definition of the Mile High Club is either having sex on a plane or masturbating on a submarine. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, does anyone have a submarine? <laughs> That's a no. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah.